When Concorde first roared into the skies in the late 1960s, the world was convinced that the golden age of air travel had arrived. The dream was clear. From that moment on, humanity would fly faster than sound. Yet reality hit hard. The thunderous sonic booms that shattered windows and rattled entire cities soon proved too costly for both the environment and society. By the early 2000s, supersonic passenger flights over land were banned entirely. But a quarter of a century later, NASA and Lockheed Martin are daring to revive this dream with the revolutionary X-59 KSST, a bold attempt to prove that supersonic travel doesn't have to be deafening. The shutdown of supersonic flight wasn't just a response to broken glass. It was the outcome of a tense standoff between engineering ambition and human comfort. But the decades that followed were far from wasted. Aviation advanced dramatically. Engines became more fuel efficient. Computers modeled aerodynamics with staggering accuracy. And new tools allowed us to measure not just noise levels, but how people actually perceive sound in daily life. Out of these lessons grew a radical idea, not to silence the sonic boom completely, but to reshape it. Instead of a violent crack, engineers sought a muted, softer thump, something no more intrusive than distant thunder. To understand the challenge, let's revisit the physics. As an aircraft nears Mach 1, air pressure waves stack up faster than they can escape, forming a shock cone. Within this cone, pressure rises and falls sharply, creating the double bang effect dreaded by those on the ground. In the past, the only solution was geographic, allow supersonic jets only over oceans, far from population centers. It was simple, but it also killed the potential of global overland supersonic travel. Today, however, thanks to advanced simulations, engineers can map shockwaves across an aircraft's fuselage and redistribute them in both time and space. By stretching out these waves and softening their peaks, the dreaded sonic boom transforms into a gentle rumble easily masked by normal urban noise. Regulators, too, have shifted. No longer is the simple presence of a boom a deal-breaker. Instead, agencies now consider psychoacoustic factors, how the boom feels, how energy spreads over time, and whether it truly disrupts life on the ground. And the timing couldn't be better. In today's world, Many cities remain disconnected by direct flights, forcing travelers into exhausting layovers that eat up hours of productivity. Supersonic travel could solve this, delivering executives, scientists, critical cargo, and even emergency teams across continents in half the time. In industries where every hour counts, time really is money. The big shift in thinking came when engineers stopped chasing record-breaking speeds and started focusing on airframe architecture. Every inch of the X-59 has been sculpted for silence. A needle-like nose stretching nearly a third of the plane's length. Fuselage volumes carefully distributed to control wave formation. A hidden topside air intake to smooth airflow. And wings and tail configured not just for lift, but for shockwave shaping. These design choices aren't aesthetics. They are the foundation of quiet supersonic flight. Just as important, NASA committed to not just one flashy demonstration, but a full testing program. Thousands of flights, acoustic surveys, and resident feedback, all leading toward rewriting the rules of the sky. And that brings us to the X-59 KSST, built by Lockheed Martin's legendary Skunk Works with NASA's guidance under the Low Boom Flight Demonstrator Program. Its mission couldn't be clearer. Prove that supersonic flight can coexist with life on the ground. The most striking feature? Its extraordinary nose, so elongated that Concorde would look short by comparison. This forced engineers to abandon the traditional cockpit view. Pilots can't see forward at all. Instead, they rely entirely on NASA's External Vision System, or XVS, which stitches together feeds from 4K cameras, synthetic vision, and flight data into a virtual display. Enhanced by infrared imaging in Collins Aerospace's avionics suite, the pilot's view is in many ways superior to a window, clearer at night, sharper in bad weather, and overlaid with real-time data. Power comes from a single F414 GE100 turbofan, adapted from the F-A18 Super Hornet, mounted atop the fuselage. The engine minimizes shockwave interactions and eliminates the conditions that typically generate loud booms. 
With it, the X-59 will cruise at Mach 1.42, about 937 miles per hour, at 55,000 feet, while producing an effective noise level of just 75 EPN-DB, roughly equivalent to a car door closing. To put that in perspective, even today's commercial airliners measure between 86 and 95 EPN-DB. The X-59 isn't just quiet for a supersonic. It's quieter than much of modern subsonic aviation. To keep the program affordable, Lockheed and NASA repurposed proven hardware. The cockpit canopy and ejection seat come from the T-38 Talon, the landing gear from the F-16, and the life support system from the F-15. This pragmatic approach kept the 2018 development contract at $247.5 million, a fraction of what a clean-sheet supersonic airliner would cost. While the maiden flight slipped from 2022 to 2025, progress has been steady. The engine was installed in 2022, the aircraft rolled out in 2023, full-power engine tests ran in 2024, and by early 2025, both afterburner trials and electromagnetic system checks were complete. In spring 2025, NASA's F-15 Research Jets Simulated X-59 flight conditions, gathering shockwave data over the Mojave Desert. By mid-year, the demonstrator had already completed low-speed taxi tests at Plant 42 in Palmdale, with medium and high-speed ground trials underway to validate stability, braking, and handling at near-flight speeds. These tests marked the final hurdle before the historic first flight. Unlike many past X-planes that lived and died as research projects, the X-59 is being groomed for a practical mission, convincing regulators like the FAA and ICAO that overland supersonic flight can finally return. If surveys confirm that people find its softened boom unobtrusive, the X-59 will shatter decades of restrictions and clear the skies for a new generation of commercial supersonics. By the mid-2030s, we may once again board sleek aircraft that cut transoceanic flight times in half, not as a novelty, but as a new standard for global travel. The question is, will the X-59 open the floodgates for even bolder designs? Perhaps hydrogen-powered supersonics or even hypersonic passenger craft? Or will the journey stall, leaving us waiting another generation? What do you think? Will the X-59 succeed in breaking the silence barrier and paving the way for the supersonic renaissance? Or are we still decades from living the dream Concorde once promised? Share your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the future of aviation, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.